Hi guys, it's me, Queen Wonderful. How are you? I haven't did a video in a while. I'm driving home on my way to work, from work, not to work. Sorry about that. And I just wanted to take some time to do this video and just basically say what's up. Um, I don't know. The last video I think I I did was I was telling you guys that I had graduated from nursing school. Well, um, since graduating from nursing school in February, I took my state boards in California um, and I became a registered nurse. So yay, I am an RN now. And I want to talk to you guys about some things that I've encountered and I'm, try I'm trying not to look down. Hey, what's up? On the video um, because I am driving and I don't have a, a car mount and I can't be holding up the phone so you can see my face while I'm talking. So you're going to have to bear with me. It's a lot of traffic and people are driving stupid as usual. And I have to be very careful. Um, okay, so I graduated from nursing school in December. Took my state boards in February. And then um, passed with 75 questions. Green went blue. The materials I used for state boards were um, the Hearst Review and basically just listening to them. To be honest with you, I didn't have time to really go back and review and I would recommend if you are doing Hearst Review that you would really study it. Um, I just went a one go around, took notes while I was listening to it. I did UWorld and uh, I think my average was like 64%. So I did that for about two months. And then um, I took it. I also had Remar review, but to be honest with you, I, I, um, I studied her quick facts. That helped me a lot while I was in nursing school somewhat. Especially, you know, the psych medications and uh, the lab value, stuff like that. But I didn't really study it. So, uh, the only test prepping questions I did was on UWorld. Awesome. To be honest with you, I feel that UWorld is really all that you need unless you just feel like you just really need a thorough, you know, go over and review of your nursing content. Okay, so I talked about nursing school, graduation, taking my state boards. Okay, now here's the iffy part. I don't know if you guys know my background, but I already had a nursing background. I was an LVN for many years, and um, come on, I'm not going to dog you out. This guy is trying to get over and these people won't let him in. They're just speeding up. How rude can you be? Anyway. Um, okay, so where was I at? I'm sorry. So now he's finally getting an opportunity and this heifa is speeding up. How dare you, you rude heifa. Um, <laughs> anyway, so like I was saying, I'm sorry. I keep saying anyway, anyway, anyway. But, um. After graduating from nursing school, taking my state boards, and then looking for a job. And as I was saying before, I had a background in nursing. I was in LVN for many years. I took, my last five years was in case management, utilization review type of case management. And, um, you know, but I put all that on my resume. I'm here to tell you. I applied everywhere when I graduated. Everywhere. 
Um, I got very few phone calls back. I mean, very few. And I remember it broke my heart because the one of the places that I practice, uh, did my clinicals, um, they had a, an RN residency, ICU, ER, and all of that stuff. So I was like, oh, yeah, I did my training there. I'm pretty sure I should get in there. Your girl got denial letter after denial letter after denial letter. And I began, I wouldn't say I got bitter, but I'm like, Lord, what's going on here? Is it, you know, my resume? Am I doing something? And so I started, I was like, give me, um, give me discernment about what's happening here. Why am I not finding any work? And whereas a lot of my um, classmates, you know, they were getting hired. Even before they took their boards, they got, you know, the uh, what I called then the good position. And so I was like, well, maybe my resume or my something, I can't even get in the door for an interview. And my best friend is mixed. She's half white and half Hispanic. And she just told me, she said, you know what, Lawanda? I hate to bring this to your attention. But I think your problem is, is your name. Because, you know, my name is very ethnic. And then, of course, you know, I'm, I'm about not lying about my heritage or anything like that. So, of course, I pick the, the black box or the African-American or, um, you know, the cultural one. And they say that they're not supposed to use that against you. So I'm like, okay. And then when she said that, I was still kind of hesitant, like, no, I don't think that. Maybe blah, blah, or maybe it's this or that. And uh, then I had another classmate <laughs> come to me. And she says, I don't know how such and such um, got in a NICU position. And, you know, she didn't have any volunteer experience. She didn't have this, that, and the other. And the person that she was talking about, she's very young, pretty, and white. And she has a very white name. So <laughs> I started thinking, I was like, well, shoot, is, is this for real? This cannot be for real and not in nursing. You know, not in my profession. There cannot be any racial profiling or racism in nursing where we're saving lives and we're supposed to be sisters and, you know, all of these different things and brothers because there's male nurses too. And so I did. I was fortunate enough um, to know someone that worked in the hospital. And because I did have a case management background, I went ahead and they were like, oh, take, tell, the, you know, tell her to come through and, you know, so I can interview her. And uh, this, the manager was a Caucasian male, very nice man. And I went for the interview and, you know, gave him my little, my portfolio with my resume. And he was, y'all, he was flipping through the pages. And one of the things that he had said was, he was like, oh my God, I am so impressed. And um, the only reason why I didn't, uh, accept the position. He really wanted to hire me. The only reason why I did not accept that position was because it was per diem. It was without benefits. And they wanted me to be fl so flexible to where I would cover 10-hour um, shifts working from oh, what is it? Maybe 3 in the afternoon to uh, whatever time it ended. So it was like a weird thing. And I was like, no, this is not what I want. So I declined. And one of the things he said to me before I left, he said, um, he said, anybody who hires you would be so lucky to have you. 
And so I was like, okay, so that wasn't it. It wasn't my resume or anything like that. And I kept seeing my classmates, certain ones, um, posting on Facebook, yay, I'm an ER nurse, and I'm an ICU nurse, I'm a this nurse and that nurse. And I was like, I'm still not getting anything. And then finally, <laughs> I got a call for um, working in a long-term care facility um, as an RN supervisor. And uh, I went there and I, um, you know, he hired me on the spot. That should have been a red flag right there, but I was like, okay. He hired me on the spot. I worked there. I think I had five days of orientation, even though I, I've been an LVN before. However, um, you know, this kind of being an RN supervisor is totally different. And then I had a, the administrator was the, the owner's son, and he was only like, 26, 27. My D.O.N., he quit two weeks after he hired me. So there was no mentorship or anything. And I was learning and taking directions from LVNs. So that didn't set well with me. I felt like it was somewhat unsafe. And um, I stayed there for about a month. And then I left there. So here I am again, unemployed, applying every, even out of the area. I was applying for jobs up north. Um, you know, I was going to do like a travel nurse position as for case management because I had that background. And I was like, well, maybe I'm going to have to work per diem because it seems like I'm not going to, I'm having a difficult time finding work. You know, even the interview. I mean, these people were not even calling me back. I was getting denial letters for new grad positions for um, before, you know, my application. I was not, sorry, you're not selected to, to move on. You know, you will not be interviewed, that type of thing. So, okay. Okay. You know, I took it all with a grain of salt, and I just, I continued to move on. And, uh, I mean, it was crazy. I was looking for prison jobs and all kinds of stuff. I was applying everywhere. Your girl wanted to work so bad. And so, to the present. So, I, I was off of work for about maybe two, two to three weeks, two to three weeks. And I applied for, uh, to be a, a hospice nurse and case manager. Oh my God. And I got it. I'm sorry. This motorcycle dude just zoomed in front of me. Oh, these people. Yeah. So anyway, so I got it and it was like really good because I mean, so far, I'm in orientation training is 90 days, and they have good benefits, competitive salary. The salary is competitive, and um, yeah, so that's where I'm at now. I'm sorry, I know this video is long, so long. So that's that. Uh, in July, I, I signed up to go back to school. I'm going to do my, um, my RN to MSN. It's a two-year program. And, um, yeah, then after that, I might do a FNP or something. I don't know. I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh, so I graduated and I bought me a new car. So, that's, um what you're seeing. I bought another truck and I'm giving Aaron my other car. So I'm excited about that. And I kind of like being out and about in the field and going from, you know, either we visit, um, patients in the facility 
uh, like boarding care, nursing homes, and sometimes um, the hospital, acute care facilities. And um, the only thing is, it's end of life care, and you know, it can be sad if you're not comfortable with death or just the very thought of a patient dying is just is very difficult so I just what I do is I tell myself okay um, death is a part of life and we don't see children so that's really good you know we don't have to see the, the kiddos and um, I don't think I can handle taking care of a dying child and it's really nice the the hospice that I work for they have music therapists uh, chaplains social workers so it's more or less like you're you're um, you're taking care of the whole patient you know which is very exciting anyway guys Ah. <sighs>